Hi guys, I'm out here today with the Volvo EC35C and today's video is going to be about basic excavator controls. So for those of you that are not too familiar with running an excavator, uh, maybe you're wanting to rent one this weekend or you just got a brand new excavator, I'm going to go over the basic controls that pretty much apply to any mini excavator. So let's just start with the uh, parts of the excavator. So. This part of the excavator is normally called the house and it's made up of the cab and the engine compartment and back here is the counterweight. The lower part here is called the undercarriage and it's made up of the tracks and the final drive as well as a bunch of other idler rollers. Now the front of the excavator, this is called the boom and this is called the stick sometimes it's known as the dipper and you have cylinders that operate these uh, parts this is the boom cylinder this is the stick cylinder and over here the bucket cylinder that moves the bucket in and out and of course we have the blade which is used for pushing material let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the cab Okay guys, we're on the inside now, and this is what you'll see from the operator seat. First of all, you have this, um, this left control has a safety switch on it. So nothing in the excavator will operate until you push this down and lock it in place. Now all of the controls are hot, of course, when the engine is running. So first of all, at my feet, you see two pedals and two levers. Now these are connected. So when I move the, the uh, right pedal forward, the lever goes forward. And so this operates the tracks. As long as the blade is in front of you, when you push the pedals forward and the sticks move forward, the excavator will move forward. When you pull the levers back, or if you tilt the pedals back, the excavator will move in reverse. It gets confusing because if the excavator is spun around where you're facing away from the blade, everything is just the opposite. Well, just remember that when you move the levers forward and the feet forward, it always goes in the direction of the blade, no matter which way the house is oriented. Now, in order to turn left, what you want to do is activate the right track in the forward direction. And what is, what's going to happen is the right track is going to move faster than the left track, so it's going to cause you to move to the left. If you want to go to the right, you activate the left track faster than the right track, so it's going to cause you to go to the right. Now, it's never a good idea to operate just one pedal when you're turning. You should operate both of them, but maybe operate one a little bit more than the other. So if I want to turn right, I'm going to get this right track just barely turning, but I'm going to go full force on the left track, and that's going to cause me to turn to the right without tearing up the ground too much. If you uh, don't operate the right track and fully operate the left track, it's going to tend to tear up the ground a bit. You also have some gauges here, uh, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, and hour meter. And over here is the throttle control right here. So uh, this is low, this is high throttle. The rabbit switch here is to control how fast you track. You can uh, track slow or fast. This is lights. This is an automatic throttle. 
control so that when you're not using the excavator for more than a few seconds, it idles down automatically. Windshield wipers, uh, heat, and, heat and air, and fan. This controls the temperature of the, the heater. So that's the basic controls. Let's go ahead and put them into action and see what happens. In order to start the excavator, this lever has to be in the up position. It will not start if this lever is down and locked. And that noise you're hearing right now is the fuel pump activating. So now that the fuel pump is charged up, we got a little fuel. Let's go ahead and turn the key and start it. Now it's always a good idea to let things warm up before you activate any controls. You gotta get those hydraulic juices flowing and let the engine warm up a bit. So now we can go ahead and lock the uh, safety lever down. Now all controls are active. Let's start by uh, lifting this blade. And here's the control for that. When we pull this back, the blade comes up. When we push it forward, the blade goes down. And it'll actually lift the front of the machine. It's always a good idea to have this blade down on the ground when you're activating the boom. Uh, it gives you just a little bit more stability. Another function that almost every mini excavator has is the ability to swing the boom left and right independent of moving the house. Every excavator has different controls for this uh, option, but on this excavator, it's on the right uh, control stick. The way you do it is to move this button to the right to swing the boom to the right and move it to the left to swing the boom to the left. You have to select this function by pressing this button. So this button here toggles this switch between boom swing and thumb closure and opening. So if you want to swing the boom, you press the button, you can operate left and right. If you want to operate the thumb, you press the button again, and then this operates the thumb. On this particular excavator, the operation of the thumb is right here on the right joystick, but on other excavators, it may be on the other stick. guys I want to go over something that can be pretty confusing there are two uh, control patterns the first pattern is ISO and that stands for International Standards Organization the second pattern is SAE and that stands for Society of Automotive Engineers uh, those patterns are pretty similar the only difference between those two patterns is which hand controls the stick and which hand controls the boom they're opposite on both of those patterns. Everything else is the same. Um, how you curl the bucket, uncurl the bucket, and how you swing from right to left is always the same, no matter what pattern you're in. But we'll go over all of that. First of all, I think we should go over what's common to both. Your right hand always controls the bucket curling in and curling out. So when you move the stick to the left, the bucket curls. When you move this right hand to the right, the bucket uncurls or dumps your material. The left hand always controls the swing. So when you push the left hand to the right, the whole excavator house swings to the right. And when you push this left hand to the left, the whole upper carriage swings to the left. That's what's common in both patterns. Now let's talk about what's different. Let's talk about SAE first. SAE is also known as pattern A or cat controls. You'll hear all of those different terms for this pattern. In the SAE, the left hand controls the swing left and right, but it also controls the stick going in and out. The right hand controls the bucket crowd and dump and the boom up and down. In the ISO pattern, also known as John Deere pattern, the left hand controls the swing, left and right, but it also controls the boom going up and down. 
The right hand always controls the bucket, just like in the other pattern, but it also controls the stick going in and out. I know that's confusing, but what you should do is just pick one pattern and learn it. It's really difficult to switch between the two patterns, so really pay mind to which pattern you want to run and then stick with it. So in the SAE pattern, the right hand controls the bucket crowd and dump. So to crowd the bucket, you move it to the left. To dump it, you move it to the right. Now in SAE, this also controls the boom going up, which is, it goes up when you pull it forward. And the boom goes down when you push it forward. Now sticking with the SAE, let's talk about the left hand. This swings it left and right. Just like in the other pattern, but what's different is that the stick goes in when you pull back and the stick goes out when you push forward. Now let's take a look at the ISO pattern. In ISO, the right hand still controls the bucket. That means curling the bucket and uncurling the bucket. Now, but when you pull back on this stick, it brings the stick in or brings the stick out. On the left hand, this still controls the swing left and right, but this now moves the boom up when you pull back and moves the boom down when you push forward. That can be really confusing when you're learning and I'm giving you all this information, but just remember, stick with one pattern, learn that pattern, and you'll be fine. Just about every modern excavator has a switch on it so that you can switch between ISO and SAE. So no matter what pattern you know, you can always uh, modify your excavator very easily to run that pattern. On this excavator, the switch is behind the seat, way down here. And you see that little silver uh, bar right there? When it's in horizontal, it's an ISO. When it's up and down, it's an SAE. Very easy to switch. There's usually a sticker somewhere near the switch to show you the two patterns. Well, basically that's it, guys. That's a real simple look at the controls of a mini excavator. And here's one more tip, is when you finish working uh, and your engine is hot, don't shut the engine off right away. Let it idle for a while and cool down. Let all those pressures stabilize. And after this run a while, you can go ahead and turn it off. All right, guys, I hope that helps in uh, getting you oriented on the excavator. Uh, just take your time and go really slow at first and do one movement at a time. And after you get some hours in the seat, you'll find that you're doing two um, movements at once, like curling and moving the stick or moving the boom and stick at the same time. But to start, just use one uh, control at a time till you really get that muscle memory in there. But you'll be proficient at it before you know it. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. I hope this helps. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. All right. I'll see y'all on the next video.